each of the world's most advanced stealth fighters. Requires 400 kilograms of rare earth elements. Can you believe it? The United States, which spends over a trillion dollars on its military annually, can't even fully assemble a single F-35 fighter jet. Dubbed the world's most advanced stealth fighter, each F-35 requires 400 kilograms of rare earth elements, and almost all of these critical materials are supplied by China. No matter how powerful the U.S. Navy's carrier strike groups or how high the precision of its missiles, without rare earths, the military is like a tiger without its claws. How did this happen? Rare earths are the vitamins of military technology. They may be used in small quantities, but their role is critical. A radar's sensitivity, a missile's accuracy, and a fighter jet's stealth capabilities all depend on rare earth permanent magnets. Without them, the F-35's engine thrust-to-weight ratio would plummet by 30%, and a missile's guidance system error could increase by five times, instantly turning these high-tech weapons into near-sighted duds. What's even more shocking is that China controls 90% of the world's rare earth processing capacity. Even if the U.S. mines rare earth ores, it has to ship them to China for processing into usable materials. The Department of Energy estimates that rebuilding a complete supply chain would take at least 10 years and could see costs skyrocket by 500%. So, let's peel back the layers of this stunning truth. Why did the U.S. willingly surrender its rare earth dominance? And how does China have such a chokehold on the global defense industry? The alarming state of U.S. rare earth dependence. The U.S. rare earth dependency is a striking reality. Data shows that the U.S. produces only 1% of the world's rare earths and has almost no processing capacity. Although California's Mountain Pass mine has reopened, 98% of the 45,500 metric tons of rare earth concentrated produced in 2024 had to be shipped to China for processing because the U.S. can't refine it into a usable final product. Most critically, the F-35, the fighter jet the U.S. military relies on most, needs 400 kilograms of rare earths per plane, and China controls 92.3% of the world's rare earth refining capacity. To break this dependence, the U.S. passed the Big and Beautiful Act last year, pledging $100 billion to rebuild the supply chain. Yet, after the Department of Defense gave MP Materials a $150 million loan, the company only refined 1,294 metric tons of praseodymium neodymium oxide in a year, a fraction of what's needed for the F-35 production line. What's even more embarrassing is that the U.S. set a protected price for rare earth materials that's three times higher than China's market price, an admission that their domestic production is both slow and expensive. From dominance to dependence, a history of short-sightedness. Looking back, the U.S. was the world's largest rare earth producer in the 1970s, with the Mountain Pass mine alone supplying 80% of the global market. However, as China's rare earth industry rapidly grew in the 1990s, its complete supply chain and low-cost advantage created a market shock. Driven by profit, U.S. companies shut down their domestic mines, offshored their production, and completely outsourced high-value-added processes like rare earth refining. This short-sighted decision, which seemed to avoid environmental costs and labor disputes at the time, has had fatal consequences 20 years later. Today, over 80% of the 129 critical U.S. military weapons systems and service rely on rare earth materials. From the F-35's heat-resistant coating and the M1 Abrams tank's laser rangefinders to the intricate sensors of the Aegis system, rare earths are an indispensable industrial vitamin. The reality is even more daunting. The U.S. faces a triple barrier in trying to rebuild its rare earth supply chain. First, restarting the Mountain Pass mine requires at least a five-year recovery period, and China currently holds over 90% of the world's rare earth separation technology. Second, environmental regulations have caused domestic refining costs to soar. The U.S. Geological Survey estimates that rebuilding a complete supply chain would cost 12 times more than in China. Third, there's a severe talent gap with the number of U.S. rare earth workers plummeting from a peak of 30,000 to fewer than 1,000. This paradox of military dominance built on a fragile supply chain 
has become even more apparent after the Russia-Ukraine conflict. As European allies also face rare earth supply crises that delay the development of their next-generation fighter jets, the so-called global military advantage is becoming a house of cards that could collapse at any moment. This deep-seated conflict between the logic of hegemony and industrial hollowing out is, in essence, a form of strategic suicide, where national security is mortgaged for short-term economic gain. Its consequences are already reshaping the geopolitical landscape of the 21st century, Europe's humiliating predicament. Europe's situation is even more embarrassing than America's. Volkswagen's electric vehicle production line in Germany had to halt due to a shortage of rare earth magnets, forcing an executive to jokingly say, Maybe we should just become a province of China. 98% of Europe's rare earth permanent magnets come from China, and German automakers' stocks can last a maximum of three months. The Le Mans Motor Factory in France has repeatedly shut down. EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen boasted about autonomous supply with Canadian rare earth magnets, but French companies admit their annual production of 1,000 metric tons is a drop in the ocean compared to Europe's annual demand. The EU has been talking about supply chain autonomy for over a decade, but the funding from its critical raw materials act is less than 12% of what's needed. A French company raised 200 million euros to expand production only to find that its costs were five times higher than China's and European buyers were unwilling to pay the premium. What's even more ironic is that some trading companies are taking advantage of the situation, raising rare earth prices tenfold, turning, de-risking, into, profiteering. Europe's predicament is a result of self-inflicted damage caused by industrial short-sightedness. Back in the 1980s, when China's rare earth industry was in its infancy, Europe, with its advanced technology and complete supply chain, controlled over 90% of the world's rare earth refining capacity. However, as environmental regulations tightened and labor costs rose, European companies offshored high-polluting, energy-intensive rare earth separation and purification processes. This, environmental outsourcing, not only allowed China to build the world's most comprehensive rare earth processing system but also laid the groundwork for today's energy transition crisis. Now, as Europe ambitiously pushes for a new energy revolution, aiming to gain a foothold in electric vehicles and wind power, it's realizing it has lost control of the rare earth supply chain. An EV factory in Bavaria, Germany, was forced to shut down due to a rare earth magnet shortage. Alstom's offshore wind power project in France stalled due to a lack of neodymium magnets. These industry giants, who once championed carbon neutrality, are now victims of supply chain imbalance. What's more, Europe accuses China of forced labor in the rare earth industry while depending on China's products. This, have your cake and eat it too, mindset turns their so-called environmental values into an international joke. Data shows that in 2023, 98% of the EU's rare earth imports still came from China. While politicians in Brussels talk about Strategic autonomy. Reality has torn off the veil of industrial hollowing out. This vicious cycle, where the loudest talkers lose the most, is the most powerful commentary on the short-sightedness of Western industrial policy. The contrast, U.S. short-sightedness versus China's long-term strategy. The U.S.'s current position is the result of decades of short-sighted policies. After the 1980s, to secure cheap imports, the U.S. shut down its domestic rare earth mines and handed over refining technology. Now, environmental regulations are so strict that mining permits take up to 29 years to approve, even slower than in Zambia, effectively blocking the path to rebuilding the supply chain. What's even more foolish is that the U.S. treated rare earths as a common mineral, focusing on strategic reserves but not on processing plants. The result is stockpiled or that can't be used directly just useless rocks in a warehouse. In contrast, China has spent 40 years achieving a full-chain comeback. It leads the world in the number of patents from mining to processing, forming a duopoly that controls 85% of the world's mining quotas and 90% of its refining capacity. What's more, China has mastered core rare earth extraction technology. 
the US-based MP materials still has to pay patent fees to operate, and its processing costs per ton is 40% higher than China's. This dual advantage of technology plus scale has made China the global anchor of the rare earth industry. The rare earth debate is about more than just resources. It's about the underlying logic of national competition. America's short-sightedness and Europe's arrogance remind us that industrial security is the true foundation of a great power. Do you think the U.S. can rebuild its rare earth supply chain with $300 billion? How should China safeguard this strategic advantage? Let's discuss it in the comments. Follow me for a deep dive into the technological warfare behind the rare earth race in the next episode. Thank you for reading, and see you next time.